we just noticed that a scalar ds by d tau squared, the rate at which the uh, interval varies with, with proper time squared, uh, is obtained by a combination of two objects that are not uh, the same object. So the generalized dot product is not just the result of uh, uh, a four vector dotted into another four vector, if you will. There's the metric that comes in between. And so let's look at another object where uh, we can uh, see the same kind of structures. So let's consider the rate of change of a function f with respect to a parameter, uh, maybe the same parameter proper time. So d, df, that's a, so that's a scalar function, right? So f is some function of uh, t, x, y, z, say. Uh, so df with respect to tau, um, so this is um, uh, just the chain rule, right? So the rate at which f varies with respect to uh, t times dt d tau plus uh, its rate of change with respect to x dx d tau dy d tau and dz d tau and uh, we can write this as, right, so it's the summation over the four space-time uh, indices uh, as df with respect to a coordinate x, in this case it's x0, but more generally x alpha, and then dx alpha with respect to the parameter, which in this case is the proper time tau, and so we know from our previous previous experience with this that uh, this object, right? Because this is a these are the this is a four vector. These are the components of a four vector, and so we know that df dx alpha can be obtained from the metric from some object. Uh, Let's call it, I don't know, a beta. So that's a vector a beta. And from that vector, we can get this kind of an object. Um, so <clears throat> this is uh, so an A that experiences this interaction with the metric gives it, this is an A uh, alpha that's this object here, whose components are clearly different than the components of a four vector, where, where the four vector in this case is a velocity, so v alpha is dx alpha d tau, and <clears throat> therefore we see the same structures here as well.